So past years, I have been saying, when is Bcash FS going to be ready for apps for being almost not, not yet, almost. Now I'm saying, let's finally do it. Uh, I've got a couple slides on uh, status and where we're at and why it's ready now. But uh, basically, I want the bulk of the time to be talking about process because it's a massive 90,000 lines of code beast and we need to figure out how to get it reviewed and what the process should be. Uh, next slide. This is, I wanted to talk a bit more about the actual goals. I think as BcashFS is becoming a bit more uh, developed, uh, I'm able to talk uh, with more of a straight face about what I want to do with it. Uh, my goal is the performance, reliability, scalability, and robustness of XFS with modern features. I think that's a tall bar. We're not there yet, but I think we're pretty far along. Uh, scalability wise, people are using it on 100 terabyte file systems without any issues or complaints. I'm waiting for the first one petabyte uh, file system user. Uh, snapshots scale beautifully. Well, that's been an issue with ButterFS that people have complained about. Uh, lots of other cool things to talk about that I'm not, not going to go into here. Uh, next slide. Future status in the last last year, a lot of scalability work has been done that involved deep rewrites. The last of the uh, code that dates back to Bcache design wise, allocator code, uh, was rewritten, replaced with Ondist uh, per, uh, persistent data structures. So now there's no uh, scanning required in the allocator or copy GC. That's what got us to 100 terabyte file system scalability. Uh, we've got no cal mode. Uh, we were starting to do some uh, benchmarks uh, of the no cal write path versus XFS. And the results look encouraging. Not still a little bit of work to do, so I wasn't showing those those off yet. But that's that's a big uh, check mark off. Snapshots. Uh, people are now using uh, BcacheFS with MySQL uh, and using snapshots for taking backups. So taking like nightly snapshots and with database workloads, that stresses things pretty well. And uh, the last of the bugs that those people were, were thinking have been worked out. And I have been saying that snapshots have been, are, are stable and waiting for the next person to break it. And things are looking good. Uh, erasure coding is the last really big feature that I would really like to get done. I, I would love to have that done prior to upstreaming, but I. I think it's time to draw a line in the sand and that can wait a little bit. Uh, erasure coding is going to be really cool though. It's no right hole and it doesn't fragment writes like uh, ZFS does. And there's obviously a lot more work to do, but the big feature work is lessening. Let's, let's say it. it's never ending in a file system, but uh, I I will have more of my time available for being a good maintainer unless I have to go off and block out the world for a month because I have to think about this feature that I'm working and I can't think about everything else. That's a lot of what like snapshots was. Uh, next slide. Uh, team is growing. Uh, Brian Foster at Red Hat has been doing a lot of really great work in bug fixes. Uh, shout out to him if he's here. His help has been much appreciated. Uh, Eric Sandine has been a big help in attracting interest at Red Hat. Uh, I've been starting to get a, a uh, bi-weekly call going, the Bcash of Cabal meeting. If anyone is interested in joining that and helping out, uh, send me a shout and I'll get you an invite. Uh, test infrastructure. We've got automated test infrastructure that's awesome and it's been making my life much easier. Uh, the full test suite will run when everything is humming along nicely in like half an hour. That includes multiple FS test runs and our own huge test suite. And Rust is something that I'm not going to take too much time here, but I've been really excited about evangelizing to anyone who will listen. Uh, I think continuing to write 
code and see when we finally have a better option available as madness. I I love writing code. I hate going back to debug code that that should have been done with, and uh, so I can move. I like to be able to move on to the next thing. And writing Rust just needs a lot less time debugging. And I intend to slowly, gradually rewrite pcachefest in Rust. That will be a ten plus year project, but it's it's already getting started and happening. Part of user space tools has been rewritten in Rust. And we've already got someone looking at taking that work and bringing it into the kernel repository. So I think that's it for the status update. Next slide. Upstreaming. I just posted this morning uh, about 30 of uh, all the non bcachefs patches in my tree, the stuff that we depend on. That's out of the list and is already getting reviewed. And the rest is about 90,000 lines and 2,500 patches that I did not post to the list. I just included a link to the Git repository. And I want to talk about how we're going to like review what the, the review will look like for that and what the process will be. And let's open it up. Uh, so I think it's, I don't want to stand over here so I can get feedback. I think it's similar to what we said last year, right? We can't, like, we're all really excited for this to get merged. Um, I think that you've basically done what we talked about last year, right? Is like, have all your prep stuff, and that's the stuff that's going to need to be reviewed. But I, I'm not going to read your bcachefs <laughs> patches. Like, and even if I did, like, I'm not going to be useful, right? So, like, yep. I don't feel like it's going to be useful. To, I mean, maybe somebody else is like, you know, Brian or whatever. Like, you have guys that are working on bcachefs, and like, yeah, I say, just trust yourselves for that part. I think the generic stuff is what we need to review, and once that's in, like, I don't, I don't see a reason why not to merge. I mean, the rest is like Linux, right? Yeah, yeah. My my question is, what what do we take to Linux? And my feeling is that it should really be for a project this size and established, it should be more about the process. What do we say about the process? And for me, the past years, a lot of that has been about process, bringing in more people, getting Red Hat interested and test infrastructure. That was that was my biggest milestone and weighed off. Things go a lot, things go a lot smoothly and more quicker, uh, more quickly when you have automated test infrastructure with a nice dashboard. So Kent, this is Mike Snitzer. Um, hey Mike. Hey, so it's interesting. Um, there was a, a failed <laughs> post of uh, the VDO target um, to Linux block yesterday in that the amount of code that was captured in two patches, it ended up being like 512K for the, patch number two and and 1.2 megabytes for uh <laughs> for for patch number three and it was an interesting contrast to see the the granularity uh the really coarse grain patches getting dumped on a list versus clicking on your um git repository and seeing 2500 patches split out in very fine grain detail honestly it, it seems insane to have that many patches factored out and and have somebody sit there and review each one and 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 make a judgment. But um, honestly, just doing that work alone, having put that work in, um, helps you seem way more substantial and and uh, easier to trust your code and your process than somebody just dumping a mega patch that encapsulates the body of work over so many years. So um, I'm just saying I, as DM maintainer, am getting set up to have to like suffer with this VDO situation, whereas you having to convey to others and get others to trust the work that you've done, you've done the heavy lifting by doing all of that work to split out patches, quite honestly. Thank you. Yeah, rebasing the entire uh, history or close to the entire history has been a lot of work, but I am also very glad that I did that. Uh, I ended up needing that uh, about six months ago. Red Hat started doing some performance testing and went, uh, what the hell? Turns out I had 
dropped the ball and had not been doing my own performance testing adequately enough. There were some big regressions, but because I had the whole Git history, I was able to write some tooling to do automated performance testing and bisect auto, uh, automated bisection of performance regressions over that whole history. And I got everything back. We're pretty close to it. Yeah, having the whole history is just necessary in my book. Yeah, I, and this is, again, this is not really a question that anybody in this room can answer because at at a file system level, like your maintainer is Linus. Mm -hmm. like that's, and that's who you have to convince to pull your whole history. I don't know what he's gonna say. It would be my preference that you pull the whole history because like that's super useful, right? Um, but it, ultimately, I think that's not a question the people in this room can answer. I think as far as review goes, like you've done what we would all expect, which is, you know, stuff that's not BcacheFS that needs to be reviewed. And then I'm, I don't want to speak for everybody, but I know for myself, I'm not going to review anything that's BcacheFS specific. And so then it becomes more of a question of like, okay, go to Linus, like, hey, this is my, my Git pull with my full history. Is this acceptable? Like, not just be like, do this, but like, is this acceptable? If not, what are what would you prefer to see, right? Yeah, that's a good way to put it. But it yeah, can, if I were Linus, so <laughs> yeah, uh, the, the interesting question is um, after we after we merge this, it's going to be uh, difficult for anybody besides you to do anything about. Uh, Right about uh, bug reports, or I don't know how large the, is the team that can do anything about bug reports. Uh, I think that's the main question that needs to be answered or to needs to be uh, explained in the pull request. Right? I want to merge yeah. this. They, I have a team that can support this. That I think this is very important. So, so that was actually one of my big criteria for before upstreaming was that. It, could not be a one-man show anymore. And I was shouting at Eric Sandine for quite a while to, hey, you guys are seem interested in this. You need to actually get me some help if this is ever gonna go upstream because I will go insane and run away to South America if I upstream it and then get deluged with bug reports and have to deal with it myself. So uh, Brian helping out has been a huge help. And that's one of the things that makes me much, much more comfortable about upstreaming it now. Yeah, so- And Bri I Brian's already been doing great work. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to reiterate a theme about the FS, Bcache FS uh, patches, which is ultimately Linus is the person who needs to be made happy. And I would suggest that since we are now talking about how, do, how can we remove file systems, paradoxically, that's probably what's going to make it easier to add file systems, right? Because I can remember... Um, when Hans Reiser stepped forward, you know, decades ago, being as enthusiastic as you were and asserting that he had a team, he had a company, it was going to be great. Um, and it may have been great back then, but then it fell into disrepair. And so we have a process for saying, okay, there are still some enterprise users, but, you know, in four years, we know how to remove it, right? And We've had Shaggy actually say, yeah, you know, I have no objections to making FSJFS go away because no one's using it and I don't want to support it forever. So ironically, just simply knowing that, you know, accepting a file system isn't forever makes it a whole yeah, lot easier, yeah. right? Um, and I think having a team and saying, yeah, this is, this is who's doing it. It's not like, you know, this project has a bus factor of one is going to be really, really important. The other piece that I wanted to uh, suggest is that, and this is sort of generic um, file system and uh, you know patch review sort of semantics, is just simply looking at that huge patch set. Um, it's a lot easier to get people to review patches if you separate them out into smallish uh, you know, 10 patches, like these are all the closure patches. These are all the patches that add various, uh, you know, interfaces that I need in the block layer. Um, these are the lock depth related patches. Um, 
that may make it easier for people to just simply look through it. Like for example, I looked at the patch, uh, the patch zero, and it said there were two lines added and two lines removed in FSEXT4. And I haven't found which patch set actually changed something in EXT4 because I'm gonna, I have to okay. actually go through all the patches to find it, right? Um, and, and that's the piece where I think people are a lot more likely to say, yep, I've reviewed all the LuckDep patches if they're like separated out. The one thing that we will need to relax as a policy question when we do that, and I believe we should, but I want to call it out explicitly, is this whole uh, you know, uh, general rule of thumb, which is we don't add uh, infrastructure until we add the first caller. Um, and that becomes a problem when we're adding something big like bcashfs. And my suggested amendment to that general rule of thumb is we add the infrastructure separately and we point at the Git repository that says, and here's the first caller. It's not yet in the kernel yet, but it's going to be in the kernel. But we're, we're sort of reviewing all the, all the prerequisites first, getting that into the kernel, and then we do a pull request that has everything in it. Whether or not that's the right process, uh, you know, we'll need to like gain consensus, and ultimately, Linus makes the call on that. Um, but that would certainly be my suggestion for how to break that chicken and egg. Oh wait, you know, we need to add these changes to locked up, add these function calls to the block layer, yada yada, and we don't have the first caller yet because the first caller in, is in these ninety thousand lines of changes that you know is going to be coming up as a, as a separable uh, pull request. Um, maybe that's not the best way of doing it, but I throw it out there as a possible path forward. My, my hope is that really only one or two of these patches are going to be of any uh, controversy and we can, hopefully that stuff will just sail through. The VMALOC exec is the one that's uh, turned out to be controversial. Christoph doesn't like it, but I kind of need it. <laughs> so, you should reply <laughs> exactly that. I kind of need it. Oh, I, I've already spelled out ex exactly why and what it's for and, and what the disadvantages of alternate approaches are. Uh, the others are pretty small and well factored and I think have already been discussed, like in the case of locked up. Uh, but yeah, if, if we do end up needing that suggestion, I'll, I'll definitely keep that in mind. Uh, to answer your question about the, the patch that touched uh, EXT4, there's a two or three patch series that reworks uh, bio for each page all and bio for each folio all and adds a bio for each folio. Uh, that's the one. Yeah, okay, thanks. And that was gonna be uh, the other observation that I made, um, which is right now, anything involving struct page has been under radical change, as I assume you've noticed. Um, oh yeah, bcashfs is already, yeah. already large folio. Yeah, yeah, but the problem is, even after you've converted to folio, people have been changing function signatures of folio related patches uh, of functions, right? Uh, and ext4 got caught out by that. Um, you know, something that yeah. used to return a bool now returns an error pointer. Um, and uh, Linux next, it builds, ship it, didn't catch it. Um, I, so I, I'm still maintaining yes. a 4.19 backport, so I, <laughs> I feel the pain. Yeah, so, you know, uh, I'm sure you, you probably have already seen that, but that's probably going to be the other piece that's oh, going yes. to be tricky. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> I, I'm not complaining because I'm very supportive of folios. Uh, and it happened from the start, but uh, I, I, I feel it. <laughs> yeah, I and one thing that I wanted to point out was, um, you know, whether or not Brian will be a resource in perpetuity, I do think that his experience working with you in the last month or so um, has shown that an experienced and capable developer can get into this code and can contribute, can, you know, that it's written in a way that um, you can get up to speed. And you know what I mean? I, th I think that there's always this chicken and egg problem of, you know, who's going to work on it when there's no users yep. and how the users, right? So um, if we get to the point where it's out there and people start using it and people start getting interested, you know, I, I, I think that we have a little bit of data to show that, you know, people who want to get into it and contribute um, 
will be able to do so, that it's a code base that lends itself to that. So yeah, I'll, I'll I think, throw that out there. I think ideally, How's it? The, the only thing the, the only thing that would be great is if right from the start, right from the start, but fairly early on, it would be clear who could jump in in, for example, picking up patches and routing them to Linux in case you should like, shouldn't be able to, to be around for a for a while, for example. That's usually that's a problem we had seen with the I don't know NTFS or NTFS three, like the maintainer disappeared, and then even though there were people who technically contributed, there was no clear path like who could route patches upstream. I think that's the most important part. So that, yeah. Yeah, I, I would trust Brian in that role if, uh, as it stands right now, if he's uh, willing to step up for that. And the other part is, yeah, I think uh, uh, BcacheFS is probably in, in excellent shape to be to be uh, upstreamed. But in general, my observation is that we, there's a lot of file systems that we have upstream and uh, I appreciate that we are uh, slowly removing some of them. EcryptFS could probably in the future be also a candidate and we should have a conversation of how to do this generally, like have a deprecation path for file systems. Because just looking at this from a perspective, if you have to touch uh, something that affects multiple file systems, things get painful very, very fast. Uh, and then you also are faced with the problem that uh, for a lot of file systems, you, there's just no one there anymore to review it. And uh, I, I have no idea how RiserFS works. I have no idea how, I don't know, if mm -hmm. some other tiny file systems uh, kind of work. So I would like to be more conservative before, uh, before we accept um, new file systems. I think NTFS and NTFS3 was a huge mistake. All uh, I can do for that is just try to write the cleanest code I can. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you. I mean, it's really not uh, directed at you. I think it, this is yeah. uh, this is uh, you're, it's great work, and uh, but just in general, like we, we mm -hmm. regularly get submissions like SSDFS or whatever it is, and like it's really scary if because the only thing that really needs to be done is for a pull request to be sent and for Linus to be. I hear no one yelling. I'm pulling it. Yeah, I I used to do uh, a fair amount of those big like block layer refactorings across the block layer. Uh, I did a lot of the early uh, BVEC iterator work and I, I know that kind of pain of having to jump into every random code base and, and learn it. And like digging into the MD code was always like, oh my God, Neil Brown is such a, a great guy and always easy to talk to, but that, I'm not sure if, how much we'd wrote or inherited, but that code was just so painful to try to try to follow. But then there's other code bases that just weren't that bad, uh, like AOE. And yeah, it really just comes down to how well and how factored, uh, how, how well structured the code is. And and for what it's worth, I've I already started do it, doing what Ted suggested for XFS online repair putting all of the infrastructure changes in its own separate set and saying, well, the real users for this are somewhat further down in the patch set, which in my case, unfortunately, is like, you know, 100 patches later. But I have finally persuaded Dave Chenner that there's some value in looking at patches, at, at both the patches and also the overall diff that you get from get diffing the beginning of the DJ Wong dev branch to where whatever the end of whatever I'm posting is so that you can actually see all of the pieces both individually broken out bit by bit and also be able to see how does this entire system actually work in while saving me the annoying task of rebasing things repeatedly and having to play code golf like moving small helper functions up and down in the patch set because one one thing one thing that I've noticed while writing online repair is that I'll get an idea for some something and think, well, this should be common infrastructure, and I'll go write it into some part of the patch set. Then later I'll think, oh, you know, I could also have used it over here to improve this other thing, and now I have to go and re take that little snippet of code and then move it a hundred patches back and upwards in the patch set. And it's like this is a waste of time. Why don't I just put the infrastructure at the beginning and tell people that they can run git diff? So, you know, so, so to address what Ted said, I, I already started doing that. And yeah, it did create a bunch of complaints from the reviewers, but I did it. So there, there's at least some precedent for trying to do something that I 
hope over, generally preserves overall code quality while also not making patch submitters completely insane from having to move stuff around their patch sets over and over and over again. Especially when the outcome, especially when the outcome is exactly the same code. Yeah, I, I, I'm not hugely worried about the, the 30 patches uh, that are all relatively uncomplicated is not that big of a patch set. Uh, I'm just going to wait for the acts and reviewed by to come in, and if they don't come in, then then I'll uh, take your suggestion as a plan B. But I, I'm not. I'm less worried about that part. Yeah, I mean, keep keep in mind that my current patch backlog is uh, about 900 patches long. So <laughs> yep. yep. Um. Okay. Something for him, yeah. Well, thank you for your time. And uh, look forward to. Uh, thank you, Ken. Seeing everyone on the list.